Okay, man, so let's talk about it. Is every white dude in prison racist? Do you have to join a prison gang when you go in? Let's get into it. So there's racist people everywhere. And of course, there's a bunch of them inside of prison. And of course, when you get a bunch of any kind of cultural people together, they're going to talk. They're going to exchange ideas, which is one thing that the government hates the most. But when this happens inside of a government controlled environment, they hate it even more. So most gangs and things are split up throughout the system. That way they do not end up with the strength to overcome these guards who, which honestly 90% of are out of shape. Uh, they don't know what they're doing. I've seen them run all the way to an incident and be so tired when they get there that they're just staying in there breathing so they don't die. So they don't want any gangs to get that strong. Now, some of the gangs that are inside, like, uh, I think, for example, GD, man, is probably one of the strongest because they go through all cultures. It doesn't really matter what race you are. You can be part of the GD, like down through folk and however the whole system works. I'm not really that familiar with it, but I do know there was black and white so dudes in the, in the middle GD. of this edit. While I'm sitting here editing, I just had the thought about this other guy that was half white and half black that we were in the penitentiary with. And he had skin head tattooed on his head, bro. And that was really different as far as the culture went for those white guys. Like, they were all shaved heads and goatees and they had a certain look about them. And then this, oh, he also had this big tattoo on his back. It was two different things on his back and this, it, it was a, a, a family crest. And it said hybrid something, something hybrid was, was on him. And then skin and head on his head. Damn, I can't remember his name, man. But it was really weird because most of the time when guys are mixed and they're white and black or whatever, uh, those guys are over with the black guys. That's just how it works, dude. So to see this guy um, go over to the white guys and then end up with these tattoos that like just marked him for life was really different. But uh, yeah. I just felt like dropping that in here in the middle of the story because uh, in the edit, I just happened to think about it. Oh, back to me. Um, of course, <laughs> with the white guys, there was, uh, you know, AC, which was Aryan Circle. There was AB, which is Aryan Brotherhood. I also remember the crazy white boys. I also remember Nazi lowriders. Um, but yeah, they, they were all there. And none of them were ever more than, I would say, seven at a time, maybe ten one time. Um, and that's about as strong as they'll let that stuff get. So when you come inside, do you have to join that stuff? No, that's definitely your choice, man. If you don't want to do something with them guys, them guys don't want you to do something. Now, where I was, this is how it worked. So... You have to understand that too, man. Some places are different. I've only been to one penitentiary in my life. Uh, I've been to a medium. I've been to a couple different jails. Um, but the politics and the segregation by race happens naturally. It's that simple. The black guys like the same music. They like the same TV shows. Uh, they understand the same slangs, so they kind of gravitate towards each other. Uh, the Mexican guys, they speak Spanish, and they, you know, uh, speak in a way that, that white guys and black guys and everybody else doesn't. So, of course, they navigate towards each other. I mean, this is just the way the world works, man. You don't see a pack of hyenas running around with four wolves, do you? Every once in a while, there's a little crazy little mixture that'll happen. I knew quite a few white boys throughout my bid that hung out with the black guys more. They grew up with the black guys. They grew up around that culture. They were used to it. It was part of their culture. Didn't matter skin color. It's cultural. If you grow up around a certain thing, regardless of 
you know, whatever people can call your history, if you will, you're going to gravitate towards that culture. That's just always how it's been, man. Um, when I did get to the medium, it was a lot different as far as segregation because it was a programming place, but that didn't matter. It wasn't like I didn't have guys that I messed with in the penitentiary that were black because hey, there was a Muslim guy that cut my hair every week. Great dude, man. You know, got him to cut my hair every week. Um, there was quite a few guys that I worked with through the store that were always on time and on point and trusted me. I trusted them. Uh, I paid a guy to do my laundry, you know, the black guy trusted him to come in my cell, get my laundry, fold my stuff up. Now, I mean, I feel like that's some people might look at that and be like, yo, you're paying a dude to do your laundry. But yeah, bro, who wants to do their own fucking laundry? If I could pay a dude 50 cents or a dollar a load to do my laundry, bro, I'm doing it like all day long. Um, but when I got to the medium, it was a little different as far as mixing. Like there weren't white boy tables in the chow hall like there was in the prison. In, in penitentiary, there was white boy tables. There was Muslim tables. And then it was kind of, I guess, divided by gangs and stuff like that. Or cars, which would be a Virginia car, Mississippi car, a D.C. car, whatever. Where they're from would be their car. Um, but when you got to the medium, it wasn't like that, man. Uh, everybody sat wherever they wanted. Now, I do remember sitting at a couple different tables and there was child predators walking the yard and sometimes they would come in and try to sit at your table. Now, these some of these guys, you can look at them and just tell, bro, like you're in here for some shady shit and I don't want you sitting at my table. So as soon as they sit down, bro, I'm like, yo, you can't sit here. Uh, no, I don't care if I'm sitting there by myself and there's six more spots. You can't sit here. I'm here first. Bounce. Um, but as far as a black dude sitting down beside me, that was a good guy. Nah, I sit down and eat hell. One of my best friends when I was inside the medium was a third Jewish, a third black and a third white. And his name was Adam. Dude, he was a great guy. We kicked it every single day. This cat would come into my cell on Saturdays and Sundays when we were off from the program and shit. He would come in with a cup of coffee, stirring it up, singing to me. The best part of waking up. And then, oh, bro, I'd be kicking at him and throwing my pillow at him and shit, bro. So, yeah, uh, it, it just depends on what you want to do. There was another couple guys that was in the penitentiary with me um, that their cell was right across from mine, man. And they were Virginia boys, and they grew up like Richmond around that area. And that's all they hung with, bro. They didn't even come to the white boys' table. Like, they played on uh, black guys' teams. They played on the softball teams with the black guys. Um, they chilled with them all the time. Like, they did sit. They did sit at the white boy section in the chow hall. Sometimes, sometimes maybe they didn't, dude. I didn't pay that much attention. Or, or the but, whole purpose for this video is to say, no, you don't have to join a gang. That is definitely your choice. Um, I was asked to join, you know, not necessarily someone come to me and said, hey, Jamie, do you want to patch up and be a such and such member? Not like that, but very much hinted to that, hey, you're a good dude. You know, you're going to be well accepted among this, that, or the other. And I was well accepted amongst all people inside, like as much as possible. Everyone has conflicts, but as much as there was white and black and green and yellow and Indian and uh, uh, Mexican and all that stuff is split up. And then Mexicans go into Puerto Ricans and I don't know how all of it works, but it, it does work as far as. The politics making sure that you still get visits, that you can still go to the yard, that you can still get your GED or learn to play a guitar, whatever it is you're doing, make a purse so that you can send it home to your daughter, which I did. Um, so that stuff definitely works inside and it's more so controlled by those races. Once a year, there was always a shot caller meeting at, in the springtime. So all the shot callers would come together and meet. And because some of them had gone to the hole and like other guys needed to know who's in control, who do we go to if there's an issue with your people? Um, some of those guys would be from gangs. Some of them would be from uh, uh, cars, again, back to cars, uh, whatever. Um, and of course, there was a white guy or two or three that went over there. There was a Hell's Angel, matter of fact, that I was in with. It was always in the meetings. Um so, yeah, that's how the politics was handled. But no, you don't have to join a gang. Um, and it all depends on custody status, too, man. When you get into mediums and lows, and this is just where I was at in the feds, then, you know, it's kind of like your county jail. Because when you go into county jail, 
they don't really care about, in my county jail, they don't really care about segregating you in your bunks. You know, a white guy and a black guy will be put together. Um, but in prison, where I was, that's not going to happen. They just didn't do it. Um, it always seemed to simplify issues. Uh, so, yeah, man, I just wanted to address the comment that uh, I think your name's Cancel Culture on YouTube, man. <laughs> yeah, you say you, you've been dropping trolling comments. Maybe some of those are the ones I haven't been able to see, bro, because it's not showing me everything. Uh, but I don't care. Drop your comments, bro, because I'll troll you right back. Like, you know, subscribe and, and share these videos, bro. Uh, I appreciate y'all hanging out with me, man. I'm going to continue to grow this channel. And when I get to 500 subscribers, which is the reason why I haven't mentioned this till just now, because you had to watch the whole video. 500 subscribers, I'm going to give away a Spankin' Monkey shirt. All right? It's got the QR code on it. You can just scan it and go right to it. I'm going to give that away. I'll mail that to you. So... 500 subscribers, man, and then I will be making a video or a post or something in order to tell you more about that.